All right, welcome back to our set on the Belvedere. We have two E18 Growlers in the sky. These are some awesome planes. You're getting a good glimpse of uh, U.S. air power right now. So these are uh, EA-18, which is uh, you know the F-18 platform, but it's designed for electronic attack. So what these airplanes do is they will escort fighters and other strike aircraft into enemy territory, suppress the radars, shoot the radars, and also be on hand to help out in a variety of other ways. So it's it's an excellent platform to be able to do close electronic escort into a target area. So these planes would fly in with maybe some F-16s in a combat situation. They would take down radar and jam enemy enemy weapons to allow the F-16s to come in and do damage. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, you know it's a neat thing too about the United States is that uh, we have a, a relatively large military. Obviously, we're very well trained, mm -hmm. but these are Navy aircraft that might be flying to support Air Force aircraft airplanes with marine aircraft involved as well too mm -hmm. to targets that guys in the army need destroyed Here so they come and it's going to be loud right it's going to be loud they're, they're coming in by yep. they're coming by in uh, t-ship fingertip formation now Here they are. and they're letting us know they're here and <laughs> you might ask it. hey is this f-18 louder than an f-16 and you would be correct and why because there are two engines per airplane instead of one. Why they need two, I don't get, but you know. Did these things land and take off from an aircraft carrier? They do. So this is, uh, you know, our Navy aircraft are designed to be able to take off and land from an aircraft carrier mm -hmm. to allow U.S. power projection from the sea to the shore. And so these airplanes will do that. Therefore, they have the ability to uh, land on, uh, you know, in very short distances with their tail hook. Uh -huh. They've got really strong landing gear because, you know, for those of you who've flown on passenger airplanes and the landing was very smooth, that was an Air Force pilot. If the landing was very hard, that was a Navy <laughs> pilot. <laughs> because that's the way they learn that's to land, they right? It, right? So they, sure. they, they pick a spot hard on the landing. ground. And landing on the aircraft carrier is not an easy thing to do, obviously. But they have to be able to survive the stress of that. And so that's why these airplanes are normally a little bit bigger. This aircraft is essentially the Navy equivalent of an F-16, mm -hmm. but if you put the two airplanes together, the size difference is significant mm -hmm. because of the requirements of shipboard operations. So is there just one pilot in each plane? There is, uh, yeah, there is one pilot. There is another crew member in the aircraft who sits in the back, and that will be the person who will run the jamming equipment, will fire the radar uh, homing missiles uh, to try and help with the systems. And so in the Navy, it's called a, a um, Naval Flight uh, NFO, a Naval Flight Officer who sits in the back, or a radar intercept officer, depending on the type of airplane. They're called weapon system operators, WIZOs, in F in Air Force aircraft that are two place. Like I'm going to sound like the novice here, but what he just did looked like sort of in, you know, if, if we're going to take it down to the people's level, if Was you've he... watched Top Gun and they hit the brakes <laughs> and you fly right by, right? Like he, he looked like he hit the brakes and shot that thing straight up. So what, how would he use that maneuver? Yeah. In real life, uh, not in Top Gun. Well, <laughs> how do I do this and not burst people's bubble? Well, it's not necessarily a combat maneuver, but it's demonstrating the high uh, alpha that the airplane can do, the angle of attack, which is the angle between where the nose is pointed and where the airplane's going. So it just... It demonstrates the impressive flight control ability and of these airplanes to do things to go from straight and level to going straight, straight up. up and then bend back over. When they pull that corner like that, what what is the force on the pilot and what is the pilot doing to control that aircraft? Well, the pilots are just really studly, so nothing. They, <laughs> no, they, uh, they, uh, when the pilot goes into that tight turn, you're pulling Gs, right? right? So. Mm -hmm. and, at all times of day, we're all at one G, which is one times the force of gravity. When they're pulling Gs and repositioning their airplanes, as you can see, you know, them flying, they'll pull up to nine Gs in an F-16, about seven and a half in these aircraft. And interestingly, one of the reasons that you can only pull a certain amount of Gs is the stuff that you're carrying underneath your airplane. The more stuff you put on there, the less Gs you can pull. Right. So the pilot will set, he knows he's getting into the turn, he'll put the control input in and you'll pull on the stick and your body will just press down into the seat and you'll have to rely on your 
your G suit, which inflates, and also a breathing technique to help keep the blood up to the top part of your head so you don't lose eyesight. Now, talk to me about the G-suits. Is it true that the G-suit just gets the blood up to your heart, and then you have you to get you rest. have to get the blood from your heart to your head, and that's where the breathing exercises come in, so these right. pilots don't pass out? Because, you know, Billy sitting at home is going, man, if I did that, I, I might just pass out. And, and that's probably <laughs> true, and you just might. Right? Yeah, that's so, right. And unfortunately, you know, we 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 have a history of uh, uh, pilots blacking out. And sure. It can, it's a thing, right? It can happen. So pilots are trained to do that. So yeah, the G-suit keeps the blood up towards the heart. The heart's got to work up. That's why you got to be in good shape. Lifting weights. Lifting weights is actually better than running because you want that good anaerobic strength to be able to, to close off the blood flow mm -hmm. and keep the blood to your head. And everybody that's flown a fighter has gotten into what we call the tinglies, where you start to gray out a little bit. I've oh, had yeah. it happen. It's right. like a black and white TV yep. turning off. But that was Friday for you, so that's no, it. No, it was in the back. It was in the back of an F-16, yeah. man. Yeah. You'll start to sit there, and you'll, your vision will start to yeah. go into tunnel vision. And so they, they teach you and train you. Like when that happens, you want to let off on the pressure, and it'll come back. Yeah. But the biggest problem is if you pull on the stick too hard, too fast, you can go from you know, awake like we are to blacked out. And, you know, there's tons of videos. You can see people do that in the centrifuge or or in the back seat of or airplanes. Or sure. yeah. an airplane. Maybe, go to sleep. maybe news people in the back of airplanes, <laughs> uh -huh. whatever. And then, of course, the joke always is, uh, you know, that you'll see them flopping around and yeah. go, yeah, you're doing the funky chicken in the back. <laughs> uh -huh. And everybody gets it on video. Now, yeah. check this out. This is a cool thing that the military started doing to demonstrate our heritage with our, you know, to uh, relive our past. This is an F4U Corsair, that's the small airplane with the straight wings, and an F-18. So these are two of the Navy's historic aircraft. Navy flies F-18s aboard every carrier today, right? E EA-18s and F-18s. And then the F4U Corsair is from World War II. So it's neat to be able to put these things together to see what it must have looked like for World War II yeah. and what it looks like today. Navy Corsair, one of the most beautiful airplanes in the sky. We'll talk more about it. We have to take a quick break. I don't want to, but we've got to hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back.